All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about interest rates and not how they affect stock prices, but how they affect uh, more specifically puts and calls. Well, we will touch on how they affect uh, stock prices in looking at how they affect put and call prices. Um, so this builds on, on the previous video of interest rates and stock prices. So all else equal, a declining risk-free rate of interest will basically do what to a put price and a call price? So here's your answer. C, increase the price of a put and decrease the price of a call. One way you can get to this answer is you can say interest rates, they have a direct relationship to a call. And for a put, they have an inverse relationship. So that's one way to get to the correct answer. If you can memorize this, um, in, and if you got there, hey, congratulations, you got a correct answer, that's always great. But I always say that rote memorization is never better than actually understanding the why and understanding what's going on. So um, we're gonna just put this aside for now. I'm going to need some room to uh, draw what's going on here. So let's talk a little bit more about why this is happening. Um, if, you, if you rely on rote memorization, if this exact question shows up or something really similar, you'll probably get a correct answer. But if this question shows up in any form uh, and you understand the basic relationships of what's going on, you're going to be in a much better position. So we remember our friend, the dividend discount model. We have the price of the stock is D1 over R minus G. And we remember that R is the, kind of the same thing as an interest rate. The risk-free rate is a component of the interest rate. So it's kind of the, the first building block of what the interest rate is. So in this example, we have an interest rate that's going down. So we are taking, uh, we're subtracting G from an, an increasingly small number. So that means our numerator is going down. That means stock prices are going up. Okay, so what does that mean for a call option specifically? Let's look at the example of a call and let's see what's going on here. So more or less, you're gonna have two options. You've got option one, which is just buy the stock outright with all of your money. Then we've got option two and option two is buy a call option. So let's say for example, and, and it doesn't really matter. Let's say the call option has a price of $5. Oh, and the stock has a price of, let's say 50. So we know that in this example, we've got declining risk-free rates. So declining interest rates make stock prices go up. So option one, you, you're gonna pay $50 and you're gonna buy the stock and the stock's gonna go up and that's good, right? Well, let's say instead we buy a call. So here we're gonna spend $5. We're gonna buy the call. The stock's going up, so the call is gonna go up as well. So that's, that's good. Based, based on the increasing uh, stock price, the, the call is going to go up in value. So you're, you're probably getting similar exposure. It, it depends on the delta of the option. It's usually not, um, 100%, it's usually something less than that, but you're getting this upward exposure of the, of the, um, uh, the stock that, that the option covers. So what are you gonna do with your remaining 45? So we spent five. So what happens to this remaining 45? Well, you're gonna keep it in your bank account or in your brokerage account, and hopefully, it's going to earn some interest.
So this is one of the major advantages of buying a call is that you have inherent leverage. You only have to pay $5 as opposed to 50 to control uh, basically, you know, maybe your delta is 90% of, or something like that. That means you're going to be going up. Uh, your option will be going up in value 90 cents for every $1 that the contract goes up. So pretty that the underlying goes up. So pretty close, uh, pretty similar exposure to actually just buying the stock outright. So you're, you have this money that's in, in the bank and it's earning interest. But remember, we said that interest rates are declining. So you have this $45 that went into the bank. Now it's earning you interest, but your interest that you're earning is going down. So you're not able to do as much with this extra $45 that you saved. So it's not looking like uh, the best choice necessarily. If interest rates were going up, on the other hand, so let's say interest rates are climbing, well, your $45 is gonna start earning more and more in interest, making this look like a better choice buying a call as opposed to buying the stock outright. So this is the factor upon which the relationship between interest rates and put and call prices works, essentially. You have to think you're, you're, you're freeing up some cash. What's going on with your cash? It's earning more interest. Great. That means your, call, your, your decision to buy the call instead of the stock is looking better and better. And it's the exact inverse with the put. So hopefully this helps um, actually get a better understanding. I won't go in the interest of just keeping this video shorter. I won't go through the put option. Just know that a put option is the right to sell versus the right to buy, which is what a call option is. So it works uh, inversely. But I think that now that we've gone through this little thought experiment, with using a call option that most of the viewers would probably be able to do the same thing with a put option and be able to see um, why the direct relationship exists between interest rates and put prices. I'm sorry, inverse relationship between puts and interest rates.